So we've got the basics of our laptop issuing application sorted. So a couple of little next steps that we can do now. Um, I've done some things here, like for instance, I've tidied up the table. Uh, I've made it bootstrap. And you'll see there's these tick boxes over here for the returned. Come back to that in a minute. And bootstrap also means that I've added a little navigation bar and I've tidied up this form a little bit as well and made it look nice. Let's go and have a look in the application, some of the things that are going on here. Don't think I've really changed, in fact, I'm sure I haven't changed anything in app.py apart from, um, where are we? Yeah, so select star from TBL students, that was for the drop down of students. It used to be select star from TBL laptops but I didn't just want the laptop ID, I wanted the name and manufacturer. So of course I went into access, grabbed myself a little bit of SQL and dropped that into there and then just added some manufacturing stuff into here. And you can see I've added some bootstrappy kind of stuff in here. I'd be expecting you to look this up. The other change that I've made here that I wanted to go over, you will notice that this doesn't have a head it doesn't have um, all of that sort of boilerplate HTML that we get in a typical page. Instead, it's got this which says extends layout.html. So we here's layout.html. Let's have a closer look at this. This stuff uh, is copied from the get bootstrap page. It's just the, um, again, the boilerplate stuff that makes bootstrap work. And I've got a navigation bar, boring navigation bar. I've got a jumbotron for a header on each page. And then I've got block, body, end block. Let's compare that to what's going on with uh, which one. These are both the same actually. I might as well just put this one over here so we can compare the difference. So extends layout. This is layout.html. Title was one thing that I wanted to have different. So laptops issued. Um, that's this block title end block. So that would be what is here would be replaced with what is here. And then my block body, what is here, will be replaced with what's between block body and end block here. So that's nice and neat and tidy because it means my index.html and my issue.html both have the same wrapper around the outside. I don't need to duplicate that code. I can um, just have that in layout.html. And if I need to change, for example, the navigation, I change it in one place right here. So we can do a slightly more complex version of this, but the principle will stay the same whenever we do more of that. Then the last thing I thought would be worth looking at, we had those little tick boxes and um, that's what this looks like here. I've got a TB, TD. It's not a hard thing. I just thought I'd mention it in passing. So in my database, I've just got a um, my returned column. You know, people were asking about how do I make it a tick box and there's no um, built in tick box in MySQL. So I just made it a single character text field, which I know will either contain Y or N. And I set the default to be N. So I've said if row.returned is Y, then I specify this checked here. So if I just go back to my application, go to home and have a look at the HTML, you can see I've got input type equals checkbox, name equals returned, and then checked means that it's got that pre-tick on it. I'm not done, of course. What I'd love to do, where was I? Here. What I'd love to do is make it so that when I tick this box, the database automatically gets updated because that's not happening here. Um, and I'd like to do that without having a, a submit button because obviously I could put all this into a form, tick that, and then update the entire data set. Uh, but it'd be lovely if I could do an Ajaxy kind of thing where I tick that database gets updated. So I think I'll do that in my next video.